In part two of our CPU fan project, we will build on our previous lesson and learn how to control the speed of a CPU fan by using a push button switch. Essentially, when the button is pressed, we can cycle through three speeds of operation, low, medium speed, and then high speed. Let's take a look at the objectives. By successfully completing this project, we will have mastered the following items. We will understand how a push button switch can be used to control the speed of our fan, and we will be introduced to internal pull up resistors and how to configure them in Arduino. If you are ready to begin, let's get this project started. Here are the parts we will need an Arduino Uno, a USB cable, a breadboard, a CPU fan a 220 ohm resistor, an MJE182 NPN power transistor, a push button switch, connecting wires, and a 12 volt DC power supply. Let's take a look at the circuit diagram for our project. There's only one modification we'll need. We have included a push button switch that has two connections. One end of the switch goes to pin five on the Arduino, and the other end of the switch goes to the ground rail. That's it. That's all the modifications that we'll need from our previous circuit. Let's go ahead and make the changes that are needed for this project. We will introduce a push button switch. One end of the switch goes to pin five on the Arduino. And the other end of the switch goes to the ground rail. Also, you'll remember that we need to connect the DC power jack in our circuit. So I'll go ahead and connect to that. That completes the additional wiring that we'll need. Let's go ahead and upload the code for our circuit. All right, now that's complete. Let's test it out. The, sp the switch has three speeds of operation. The, when I press the switch one time for the first time, it's gonna be low. Then a second time, the fan is gonna be spinning at medium. The third time, it's going to be spinning all the way on. And then a fourth time, it's going to shut the fan off. And then uh, we will cycle through those. So I'll go ahead. So there is low, I'll press it again for medium, it's now going at medium speed, then high speed, one more time, so now the fan is currently at high speed, and then if I press it again, the fan should shut off. All right, there you have it. One more time, low speed. Medium speed. High speed. And then off. And there it is. Let's take a look at the code. Initially, we define our motor pin as 11. This is the same as in the previous program. Also, we define the button pin as 5 since we connect one end of our switch to pin 5 on the Arduino. Next, we have a global state variable, and we're using this to store the state at which the push button switches the current speed. So we initialize that to zero initially. In our setup function, we do a pin mode on the motor pin, setting that as an output. Here is where we set the pin mode on the button pin as an input pull-up. So we are in fact here initializing the internal pull-up resistor on the button pin. 
we do an analog right to the motor pin and we pass in zero, meaning we want to initially turn the fan off and we set up our initial serial connection. Before we go on to the loop function, let's quickly take a look at the documentation for input pull-up. So I'm going to Google that pin mode function. So we're going to look up that pin mode documentation here. And as you can see, um, for the mode variable, it can be input, output, and we have seen these two previously, and input pull-up. So I'm going to click on that input pull-up, and it's going to take us into some details about that particular constant. So if we scroll down a bit, here we'll see pins configured as input pull-up. So the 80 mega microcontroller has internal pull-up resistors, resistors that connect to power internally that you can access. So if you prefer to use these instead of external pull-up resistors, you can use the input pull-up argument in pin mode. Essentially what we're doing is, as the name implies, input pull-up actually pulls up that value to a high. So by default, if you were to, to take a digital reading of that input pin, because that resistor is pulling it up to five volts, a reading would be high. So that has implications of, you know, when we take our reading in the circuit, and I'll show you shortly what that means. So next we continue in our loop function, we do a, if a digital read of our button pin is low, that means that our switch was pressed. We cycle through the states. If the current state is zero, and that's what we initially had when we set up our program, so this is assuming that this is the first time in. If the state was zero, we're going to set the fan to the lowest setting. We do an analog write to the motor pin, and we're mapping the value of three, sort of the one third of the range, and our range spans from zero to nine, and we're mapping that to an equivalent. Uh, value between 0 and 255. So that will do an analog write and we set the state, we increment it to 1. So the next time we loop, if the do a digital read on the button pin and it's low, if it's pressed again, state would have been 1. So if state is 1, we come in here and we set the fan to the medium setting. So now we'll do an analog write to our motor pin and we'll map 6. 6 is about two-thirds away in the range between 0 and 9, and we map that to an equivalent value between 0 and 255. We set our state to 2, and we continue on. If we come in, state is 2, we're going to write it now to the highest setting on the fan, so we do a map 9, 0 to 9, and then we do a 0 to 255. Actually, this would equate to 255. So this is like we're doing an analog write to motor pin. The value of this expression is going to be 255. We set our state to 3. We loop again. And if you press it another time, if state is 3, we shut off the fan. So we do an analog write to motor pin 0, and we set our state at 0, and we start the process all over again. In between, to act as sort of a you know a debouncing mechanism we're just going to do a delay before we continue any other additional readings of the push button switch so this is just to make sure that you know we don't pick up any debounced readings that we're, we're not intending to so that's it that's our, our program just to quickly revisit the operation of the push button switch in its normal state as the pull-up resistor is enabled on pin 5, if you were to take a digital reading without the switch being pressed, it would be high. So uh, in that case, we know that the switch is not being engaged and it's high in its normal state. When we push the switch, these two terminals actually are connected. So current is going to flow through the internal resistor back down to ground. And if you were to take a reading at pin 5, it is going to be low since the current is going to be flowing through the resistor, that 5 volts is going to be dropped across the resistor, so you'll get a low reading, and that's how we'll determine if the switch was pushed. So by using this logic, we're able to cycle through the various states of the 
push button switch and have cycled through the states of our fan. So hopefully that uh, provides some clarity on the operation of the switch in our circuit. To summarize, in this project, you learned how to control a CPU fan using a push button switch and the Arduino. You were also introduced to the concept of pull-up resistors and how they are configured and enabled in Arduino. Great project with some great concepts. I hope you're getting pumped. Let's move on to our next project.